Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. This is Christy Fall, the Care Factor, coming at you live with the best little parenting show on the internet. Oh gosh, just for consistency, let's plug these books real quick. Science Book from Fear to Love that you can pick up on promotion at feartolovebook.com. This incredible book, The Great Behavior Breakdown, you can find this at postinstitute.com and also on Amazon. And on our website, we have these two as a package. Um, Also, just so you know, uh, if you happen to be involved with an organization that you think could benefit from those books, uh, we have opportunities for significant discounts. Uh, They're actually built right into the website, so uh, as you increase the number of books that you're ordering, the the percentage discount also increases. So um, if you have an organization that you think could benefit from these books, by them being shared, say, with a foster group or adoptive group, or maybe you just had a group of parents right there in your community and you think you guys could get together and, you know, read the book together, discuss together, create your own little network of support, which I think would be absolutely awesome. That's what we're all about. Um, you know, parents supporting parents is a beautiful thing. And that book, uh, especially the book from Fear to Love, um, You know, just really, um, it's just such a good tool for learning and teaching. And Carrie, good evening to you. I hope you're doing well. So we've been on the topic of expanding our window of stress tolerance or just understanding what the window of stress tolerance is, what that means, and talking about the fact that this is not a, it's not a fixed thing. It is variable and flexible. And a big part of how we are functioning and our ability to tolerate stress is our biological makeup, meaning our our neurotransmitters and our hormones. That has a big part of it. And our self-care. Those two pieces have a significant part to play in how well we are able to manage what the world is bringing to us. Um Those hormones, man, oh, man, oh, man, don't ever underestimate them. Um, I was talking, uh, we were doing a follow-up to our book study. I have a little support group for some women who went through the book study with me, and uh, we were just talking about hormones in general, and one of the moms, was she was really describing how the premenopausal process was affecting her and having been through that myself, we were able to have a really good conversation about um, all that we were feeling. And it was so interesting because having that experience and realizing I had the same experience in my teens, only I wasn't aware, I wasn't in tune with my body. So I didn't have, I didn't have that understanding. And so Having a, being older and a little wiser and a little more attuned to my body really gave me some really good insights. And it may be helpful for you in terms of understanding your teens as they're bumping up against their um, need for autonomy, the biological urge to be more autonomous and how their hormones just have them all like, sometimes and then that makes us sometimes and then we've got our own internal systems and so you know it's a lot it's a lot just trying to keep a cool head (sighs) rational reasonable thinking in the midst of all of that and our self-care is such a vital piece of that so um out of out of sequence, but because this is just how I'm feeling today, and I feel like it's much better to come and talk about what's just coming up organically versus always sticking to a script. So 
one of the things that I want to talk with you guys about is this process of noticing how you feel. Because sometimes we're just go, 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 going, or we're just trying to follow the routine, follow the routine, and our fingers are not on the pulse of how our kids are feeling, and they're not even on the pulse of how we're feeling. So, take a couple of breaths. Uh, we all hold stress in our body, and we all hold it in different places. I tend to hold stress in my shoulders and in my jaws. Some people feel it in their chest. I have a lot of parents I talk to, and they say they feel it right here and even kind of right at their neck, like there's things that they want to say, but they can't say it, like they're not permitted. And that actually could be a script, could be a script from childhood where you weren't permitted to express your feelings. And so wherever you hold stress in your body, so we close our eyes, take a little breath, and notice where you hold stress in your body. <sighs> Breathe into that place. Learning to listen to your body. What do I need? Am I needing nutrition? Am I needing physical activity? Am I needing my music, music I like? Am I needing <sighs> social? Am I needing some, some support from a friend? Or not even support, like just maybe just to get out of the, the trauma bubble, but, you know, just to get in connection with some people who are just living life, who aren't uh, dealing with the tangles of trauma and just kind of feel something outside of that and having some kind of just, what, like, I don't want to use the word normal, but that's the word that's coming to my mind. What is it that I need? It's so important to learn how to listen to your body. And it's also really helpful to do these things in front of our children, to take these deep breaths in front of our kids and to be able to say, I am tempted to get junk food, but I really know I need something good for me. Carrie says she holds hers in her neck too. Um, even You might even need a, um, a pillow to support you differently when you're laying down. It's just supporting your neck and giving it that support maybe a back rub, maybe a hot bath. I'm going to take a hot bath today. I'm feeling kind of edgy, and I think that's why I feel prompted to like talk to you guys about listen to your body. What's it telling you that you need? It's okay to speak about that with your children or in front of your children. Like, say you're getting ready to go, go into the grocery store or you're there and you're starting to be like, I need to get out of here. Then say that. And because when we say it out loud, it helps them know it's not necessarily about them. We're humans. We have our own stressors. We have our own challenges. Sometimes we blame things on our children, but really, you know, it could just be that we're just feeling like this. We might be feeling like this just because, and the fact that we have to be parents at the same time sometimes can make it hard for us to feel like we have room to breathe. So seriously, taking up a little of the space, you know, for your life, um, we compress ourselves a lot sometimes, or we feel like we're just absorbing all the stress in our environment. Whoa, breathe that out. Listen to your body. Just tell your kids, I need to take a break. I'm feeling stressed, and I don't want to spew that on you. It doesn't really have anything to do with you. I'm just tired. I'm stressed, and I need to go take a nice hot bath. The more we vocalize about things like that, it helps them because they need to be able to be attuned to their bodies too. What is your body telling you you need? Do you, be, when we experience trauma, people who go through traumatic experiences, oftentimes they're very disconnected from their physical experience. It is a survival mechanism so a survival mechanism when you've gone through trauma is that you don't really sense your physical body. You might not notice when you are really hungry. You might not notice when you are really tired. You might not notice when you're sick. It's a survival mechanism to have that disconnect. I know several kids who could go like super long extended periods of time without eating because they just didn't, they weren't connected to their bodies. So 
anytime we have the chance to speak about what's going on for us, and it's just, you know, like, think about, like, if you if you have a partner, you might say it to your partner. If you don't, you're just speaking it out loud like you're talking to yourself. And it's not like you're trying to directly teach your children. It's not even about that. Don't have that expectation hook. But it will. it is a natural occurrence. It's a natural occurrence because they are watching us and learning from us all the time. So when we can say things like, you know what, I just need to pause for a minute. I just feel like I'm about to flip my lid and it's just going to be better if I walk away. Say it out loud, you know, just, and then just do it. You know, <laughs> I'm feeling really fatigued. I need a hot bath. Like I need it to be so hot that I almost feel like I'm scorching my skin. So I'm going to go run myself a really hot bath. Uh, I'll be out in 30 minutes. Whatever, the more you can speak about the needs that you're experiencing the body, in your body, the more they will learn from you, and it will also be an avenue for helping them learn about being connected to their own body. A lot of times, especially in that, oh, like 13 to 14 and up, it's like they don't want to hear it from us anymore. They don't want to hear it. Like they, you know, they might listen to people on the Internet, they might listen maybe to their teachers. Maybe they have some teachers that they'll listen to. But, you know, they, they they don't really want to hear from us anymore. They're in that phase where everything in them is pushing them towards autonomy. And that is okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Because they're still watching and they're still learning. They're still picking up little things. So the more we can just kind of try to let some of that go, take some deep breaths, Focus on our self-care. It's a tough phase, Karen. <laughs> Karen said my son is in that phase. It's a tough phase because we still want to do so much instructing and correcting. And they're just, you know, they're in that phase where they're going to, you know, they're going to go through some things. And they, they may make some mistakes and they may learn from those mistakes because that's how most of us learned. And so... When they're in that phase, I find it most helpful to just take some, yeah, it is, take some deep breaths, meditate, pray, try to inject calm, you know, let them know you're here for them, trying to help them understand that I might not always agree with the decisions you make, but I am not going to, I'm not going to abandon you, I'm not going to reject you, I've got your back, just, you know, I may not agree with you, I'm not saying I'm condoning every decision that you make, but I'm still going to show up for you. I'm still in it with you. We're in this together. And uh, we're going to walk this out and make some time for your self-care. Make some time for your self-care. <sighs> That's what I'm feeling like today. Honestly, what I feel like today is I wish I had somebody who could scrub my hair. Like that just, that would feel so good. <laughs> So it's so funny that, you know, when you really get quiet and you listen to what your body needs, it's sometimes it's funny the things that you come up with that you don't realize, like, man, that would feel really great. So, you know, um, getting our needs met when we are in the day in and day out lives, uh, people who are really hijacked and plugged in, people who live because of the trauma of how their brains are wired, your self-care, like taking care of them, taking care of yourself, it is equally important. And I know so often we put ourselves second. I know we do. And we feel like that's a requirement. But I want to invite you, especially as we're talking about this, just into that realm of, of creating, creating a space in the routine of your life for your needs to be taken care of. Because when you don't take care of your of your needs and your window of tolerance is just finally slow, slow, slow to nothing, then we don't have a lot to give the ones that we love the most. Everything that we're putting first then begins to suffer. So self-care is not selfish. It is vital to everyone in your family, and it's also teaching them. It's teaching them how to take care of themselves as well. So, ah, you know, I just wanted to come on and be authentic this evening, um, give you some of the little nuggets. I want you guys to know that um, we are in this as well. 
we're not just like some professionals over here talking about something that we're not walking out to. And so, yeah, it gets messy. It can be tiring. It can create a lot of fatigue at the brain level for you as well. Trying to remain, having that sense of calm and trying to grow that internally is big, big work. So I hope that at some point this evening you take some time for yourself. And I hope that at some point this evening you can also take some time to nourish your children in a loving way. To let the little things be little things. To not turn little things into life and death. To just take it one little step at a time. To try to stay in the flow as much as we can. And to let the love you have for them shine from your eyes. Even if it means that it's shining from your eyes as you're flopped on the bed saying, I'm done. If you need me, I'll be in the bed and you can come and snuggle with me there. Because sometimes that's just how it is. And remember, in any given moment, we can act out of blueprints of stress and fear and overwhelm. We can take one to two to three deep breaths and we can choose love. And we can remember that everything is temporary. Tough moments, they're temporary. They're temporary. And hopefully good moments will come soon. Much love to you guys. I hope you have a blessed evening. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye. Join us live on weekdays at 6.30 Central Time on Facebook at the Post Institute. Don't forget to get your copy of Brian's best-selling book, From Fear to Love, on promotion. Just pay shipping and handling at www.feartolovebook.com. That's www.feartolovebook.com.